I have with me one of the smartest white men on this side of heaven. Thank you, God. Bill Lockwood is back, our friend. And Bill is a writer and radio host at America Liberty with Bill Lockwood. He's a teacher in Wichita Falls, Texas, and preacher at Our Park Church of Christ and the author of an amazing study guide, Ezekiah, Ezekiah, the Watchman of Israel. Bill, good morning. Welcome back. Good morning, Jesse Lee. How are you today? Amazing. We missed you last month, so I'm glad you're here this time. Yeah, I know. I, I don't know what happened there. The first thing I know, it was the first of the month, and I thought, what, uh, you know, it just uh, went, went right by me. So yeah. glad yeah. to be back, though. Uh, good to have you back. So you're down in San Diego? I am. I'm in the San Diego area, Coronado. You look yes. like an, uh, uh, a Californian person right now. Sunshine. Yeah, I, I, I try to, look, when I'm in California, look like the Californians a little <laughs> bit. <laughs> Not all the way. <laughs> Amazing. What did you think about that opening we just did with um, G. Edward Griffin? You know, uh, I've, I've read G. Edward Griffin for many years. He's a, a great, great thinker, writer. He's written a lot of great books on the material. He wrote one on the... Uh, matter of fact, people need to read G. Edward Griffin on the fearful master about the United Nations and its designs on America as it was in, in, conceived. Uh, he wrote a book on the Federal Reserve that is just absolutely outstanding called The Creature from Jekyll Island. Uh, both of those books I've read and uh, just a great thinker, but he's exactly on target regarding communism and the racial question in America. That's amazing that he wrote and spoke about that way back then. And today, that is exactly what's happening. They're changing the government. They're getting rid of the police force. They, they have this war going on between the blacks and the whites. And the blacks are being used by this phony idea that they are affected by the civil rights and uh, slavery and all that. It's amazing how that, it's happening. It's in the full force right now. Right. You know what? Um, I had a professor at uh, Harding University he actually was in an emeritus status at the time, J.D. Bales. Uh, and James Bales uh, wrote about the same thing. Um, there are a lot of people like that. Uh, and, and it's interesting, he was a preacher, but there are a lot of preachers who were in the anti-communism um, movement back in the 1950s and 1960s. And uh, J.D. Bales wrote a book about communism, its fruits and fallacies. I think it was published in 1962 or three or four. Anyway, in the early 1960s, and he had a lot of anti-communism material, but simply because communism is based upon atheism and it is an attack against Christianity. And that's really what this war is about. It's an attack against God, it gets against Jesus Christ. As you know, just from reading the Black Lives Matter front page uh, website. Yeah, absolutely. What, um, what do you think, I mean, I don't know if you know, I know, I don't really know. The outcome of all this would be? Well, <clears throat> that is really the question of the hour. <clears throat> um, I, 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 don't, uh, I don't see anything good coming of it as far as uh, the America that we've known. Um, I guess my, my major concern is um, that, that we will have uh, religious freedoms because we're, we're fast losing them. And, um, <clears throat> you know, after the Supreme Court decision, particularly two weeks ago, where they used the 1964 Civil Rights Act, you know, to include homosexuality. So um, I don't know. It's it's uh, it's kind of frightening, really. I just think we're going to lose our freedoms, and we'll just be like a third world country. And Christianity is going to be underground. That's one thing that's going to happen, uh, and and it's already starting to happen in some senses. You know, preachers and pulpiteers they are they're putting the sock in their mouths already, and they have been for a long time. They don't even talk about the issues. Yeah. So as long as so as long as you talk about what the state wants you to talk about and report to the IRS, then everything's fine. So we've already kind of been accustomed to it. So it's. Um, but I think that's a very frightening prospect, really, what's going to happen. But it's going to be very, very sad in America. You know, Newt, uh, uh, what's his name, uh, Black Lives Matter meter, uh, uh, leader in New York, just said the other day, we're going to burn it down, burn the system down if we don't get what we want. That's amazing. And do, uh, that was Hank Newsom. That's right, Hawk, Hawk Newsom. Hawk yeah. Newsom. Hawk yeah. or Hank or whatever his name is. Yeah, Hank Hawk. <laughs> was it Hank Nick or Hawk? Or uh, Nick wrote Hawk. Hawk Nixon. Yeah. Um, so what I, I wanted to ask you about this, the business owners first had to deal with the Chinese virus. And then right after that came to the riot and looting and destroying. And, and now that that is well on its way, 
the children of the liar coming back and saying, well, the Chinese virus is back. It's as yeah. though they don't want to release the people. And, yeah. and what do I don't understand? Because a lot of people are afraid of the Chinese virus and they're afraid of the blacks. What do the people, what are they to do? How, how do they deal with all this? The good folks. Well, it, yeah, I think we better be on our knees praying, number one, and uh, we're praying for some guidance and strength here that we might be able to stand for principle. It is, um, it is concerning that uh, we have uh, the China, Chinese communist virus, I call it CCP virus, um, that the virus has come back with a vengeance at, or seemingly at this particular time. And, you know, there's, there are uh, uh, governments uh, such as one, and I believe it's in St. Louis, who has asked for uh, the, the membership list of the churches because they want to make sure that they don't meet and congregate in groups <laughs> more than so many. And uh, so uh, I, I know I'm not quite sure how we're going to approach all of this, but people need to recognize what's actually happening to their rights and to stand up for them. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, be, especially our religious freedoms, because this religious freedom is what's really they're after here. They're saying that it's not that the Chinese virus is getting worse. It's just that more people are tested for it. Yeah. And because the hospitals are not filling up and there's no different than that. And so the older people and young people are getting it, but the young people can handle it. It's not a big deal. So it's not like it's worse. It's just more testing are being done. Right. And, and the, the, the number of cases, therefore, have, has risen. However, the number of deaths has decreased. Yeah. So, so it's, um, but I know that the, the states that are opening have tried to, uh, they've kind of halted their opening or they've put it on hold for a little while. And the same thing is the case um, in a lot of cities. So uh, it's kind of unusual. I don't know if we're living in a new world, a, new, a brave new world or not. But, um, you know, that was Aldous Huxley's statement, brave new world. That was a humanist, you know, it's a brave new world. That, that was an anti-God world. But that's seemingly where we're headed. Are you having church? Yes, we are. Sir. Yes, we're worshiping. Yes, sir. Oh, okay. You mentioned the Supreme Court ruling in favor of LGBT and abortion. Um, it doesn't seem as though we have anybody fighting for good anymore. Right. That's exactly what's happening, uh, and it's it's past time. To, like your the song that leads you into the show here, Christian people need to stand up. And one thing that needs to be done here is that. Christians and even and even non-Christians need to say the Supreme Court does not make law and they may give their opinion But that's not law. Yeah, it's just the same as if they said Jesse Lee Peterson because he's a black man is does not have Human rights in the, such as in the Dred Scott decision people recognize that was not a legitimate statement That was not a legitimate decision because we 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 aligned it with what is natural law and the law of God, and we recognize that it was wrong. So we need to recognize those wrong decisions and disobey them. And we should have been doing that already when it came to Obamacare. I, I insisted that states say, no, we're not going to do this. This is unconstitutional. And the state of Texas or whatever state it may be, Alabama, say, no, we're not going to do this. And we're not going to implement it. And you're not coming in here with federal officers to do it either. But sooner or later, someone's going to have to stand up. Some state's going to have to stand up and say no to some of these things. And we're going to have some consequences, and I'm not sure what they will be. What happens when property rights are not protected? Well, when property rights are not protected, that's, that's a good point, because we're, the property rights are being absolutely decimated in our country. Private property is being destroyed by Black Lives Matter. They don't care about property rights. It's being destroyed by Antifa, the uh, pro-communist movement. Both of them are communist movements, by the way. But at any rate, when property rights are destroyed, number one, we lose the, you and I lose the incentive to even have private property. You know, there's a lot of shop owners right now who say, I, I can't even back, open up business again. I mean, th their incentives to, to open up a business and to put their money and their life's earnings into their work is, is gone because all that's going to happen is going to be destroyed again, and, and they promise they're going to destroy it again. So once that kind of thing starts rolling in society, you lose incentive to, to have any private property or to make anything worthwhile for yourself a business. So private property destroys, but there's something else that's even more ominous, and that is, Jesse, private property is linked to natural rights to myself. It's linked to me. Yeah. So <clears throat> there are three basic rights, and that is life, 
my liberty and my property. Property is an extension of me. So my property is an extension of my labors, an extension of my efforts. It, it's an extension of any ingenuity that I may or may not have. And since that's an extension of me, when private property is destroyed, it's really an attack upon me. Someone, if you walk out in your, in your parking lot and you see someone's keyed your car, it makes you angry because someone has, someone has really attacked you. They're thinking, you know, they're attacking right. you. Yeah. Your business. So that's a private property. So if we lose private property, the next thing that's going to happen is they're going to attack the people too. That's what we don't, uh, maybe we don't see necessarily, but that's, that necessarily comes attacking individuals is this is going to happen next and it's already happening of course as we see you can just see it on on youtube and on, on just different accounts on twitter and so forth but you lose your individual life uh, rights as well you don't have rights in your as far as your life is concerned for freedom and they're just beating up people that are white because they're white yeah so, <clears throat> that's what's happening and private property is just a part of it did you see that uh, uh that uh family down in st louis where the Black Lives Matter people broke into their private property and they came out with their gun. The husband and wife came out to protect themselves. And yes. now they're under attack. Right. The innocents are under attack and not Black Lives Matter. Right. That's exactly what, so we are gonna have to, we're gonna have to stand up and protect our, protect our lives, our liberties and our private properties, regardless of the consequences, such as you've been doing for a long time, you know, but that's, but that's what happened. They did, they were perfectly right. I think even the district attorney in that area has tried to bring charges against them, if not already brought charges against them. About yeah. That. But it's like, well, this is their private property, and we have the right to defend our private property. And Black Lives Matter and Antifa broke into the play. They tore the gate down, and not right. like it was open property. It was private property. Right. It was they had a gate or right. fence around, and they tore it down. Yeah. Yes, sir. They were not. They were already were on private property. This this was not a public thoroughfare, a public street. This was on their driveway and in, in their through. They came through their gates. That's correct. I I can't get past this idea that Black Lives Matter is an organization that was founded by a bunch of fat black lesbians, radical lesbians, <laughs> and who hate God, who hate the family, who hate anything that's good. And, and, and they got the whole country in uproar. They have, yeah. pe have people agreeing with them and, and cops and, and white folk bowing down to them. And how did that happen? I don't, how do you follow lesbians? Uh, you know, that's right. Well, you're right about the founding of it, you know, whether it be Opal Tamidi or Pal uh, Patrice Cullors, uh, Alicia Garza, the three founders, they're, they're lesbian women. Yeah. And they stay on the, on the front page of Black Lives Matter website that their goal is not on open borders. That has nothing to do with Black Lives Matter. <laughs> right. Open borders and the destruction of the nuclear family. Yeah. That is mom, dad, and the kids. They don't want mom, dad, and the kids. And they've just about done that in the inner city. Blacks, of course, as you know, the black family, 90% are without fathers in the home, in the inner city, 70, above 70% nationwide. So they've just about done it with the black family, but they want that for everybody. So, but here's the thing, I, I just read an interesting book, it's a great book by Shelby Steele, and it's called White Guilt, I don't know if you've yeah, probably heard of it. Yeah, absolutely. But he, I tell you, he has a great insight into this, and he said that the white guilt idea began with LBJ, Great Society Programs, in which we were, you know, we were running backwards, the whites were running backwards, and apologizing for everything, and so, and so we're throwing out things such as, um, you know, uh, quotas, ra racial quotas in hiring and preferences in hiring and black studies in colleges. All of these things, we're just throwing them out there to show that we're we're not somehow racist because the stigma that LBJ put on everybody is that we're all still racist and therefore we, we have to do something. So, and then we, and then the, the black community just kind of lives with that and goes with it. Yeah. So that's what, so we're just still going backwards. And now the, the point is <clears throat> just as in a debate, however, you can never prove a negative. You can never prove something in the negative of something. You, you know, that's why in a, de a debate you, you prove an affirmative, a, an affirmative statement. Right. A, well, you can never prove a negative, and that is, I'm not racist. So I've had people say to me, well, when all this began, they said, well, I'm going to go to a black church because I'm going to show I'm not racist. Wait, that, that ain't going to work. That's not going to work. That, nothing like that's going to work. No. You can't do enough 
to show that you're not racist because because you're white, you are racist, and it doesn't matter what you do. So the the head of uh, Chick Fil A went and bowed down and washed the feet of black people recently just to show. I thought, you know, they're they're missing it entirely, and they're just they're just kowtowing to a communist organization is what it is. Yeah. And 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 matter of fact, the Freedom Road Socialist Organization, which became the Liberation Movement. Uh, as actually that which spawned Black Lives Matter. It's all, it's socialist, it's communist, and interestingly, if you today, if you go to Black Lives Matter and hit the donate button, it's gonna take you to Act Blue. Act Blue funnels the money right into the Democratic coffers. So you're, you're supporting Joe Biden and, and the Democratic list of candidates. Amazing. I, um, I, um, I at one time, Chip fil had a, was under attack by the homosexuals. They were trying right. to shut them down. And so we went out and protested with Chick-fil-A. We stood with them yeah. because at that time they were claimed to be a Christian owned, owned by a Christian person right. or people. Right. And so we stood th- with them. And now that the, the, the owner is licking booths, I want my protest back. <laughs> <laughs> I think they need to refund your protest. They do. That's crazy. <laughs> it is crazy. Well, you know what? That's But that's what's happening. I mean, he, even he and all these major organizations throwing huge chunks of money to Black Lives Matter. Yeah. It's All, all that is is going to the Democratic coffers it's, and, and the communist movement in America. That's what's happening, just as Jed Griffin pointed out. Before the uh, 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 Chick-fil-A president decided to lick boots, they hired a black man to run the organization or something. Right. I said, then it's over. Yeah. It, I, it's over for them because once they bring in the blacks, the whites are afraid to correct them if they should do something that the company disagree with. Yeah, you, 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 that's right. I think everybody knows that you can't, if you're in a business or if you're in an organization or even, even in a governmental entity, particularly governmental entity, you can't fire a black. Yeah. And you've, you've got to go answer all the way to Congress for it, if you do. Yeah. So you can't find, so then now what happened was in the Bostock decision two weeks ago, the Supreme Court, Neil Gorsuch wrote the opinion that they put homosexuality and transgenderism in the, Bost- or in the 1964 Civil Rights Act. So that means it's going to be the same thing regarding homosexuality. You'll not be able to, not be able to touch them. It doesn't matter the performance. It doesn't matter whether they're good performing workers or poor performing workers are causing trouble in the workplace, whatever it may be, you couldn't, you can't get rid of them because now you're going to be accused of violating the 1964 Civil Rights Act, just as the blacks take advantage of today. And by the way, Shelby Steele points out this is all white paternalism. Yeah. It is to say, to say, well, you can't do it on your own. I'll have to, we'll have to put a law in place. I'll have to do something for you because uh, you can't do it on your own merit. We, your, your merits don't count. And he calls it making the black samples of everybody. Sample yeah. wiping. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. Uh, I remember when that civil rights movement thing started. At one point, I started hearing that the Communist Party had infiltrated the movement that Dr. King was working with uh, the communist people. And I was too young to understand it at that time. But now I'm thinking that maybe that was true. Right. Well, you know, the, the communism has wanted to to uh, infiltrate and destroy America always. And that's just part of communism. So to, to do it, they have to create fissures and, and they look for natural fissures. And the natural fissure in America is race. Yeah. Because yeah. there's a division. So they so they've driven wedges in it. So any any kind of movement among the blacks uh, against the white society, then they were, they're going to be infiltrating that movement. And that's what they did. And Dr. King himself even attended communistic meetings. And he made uh, statements, public statements, in which he was supportive of Ho Chi Minh, for example, in the Vietnam War. Um, but, you know, it, it's, um, it, it's pretty sad. But nevertheless, uh, that, that's what happened with, with Dr. King as far as, and a lot of people in that movement. So that's why you have, for example, the Jesse Jackson, who was with, along with King, coming out, and he's, He's basically a socialist, is what he is. Yeah. The you know, Rainbow Coalition. So, um, how did that happen? Well, that happened a long, long time ago when they when they started making alignments there. Do you think Dr. King knew what he was doing? I don't know about that. I mean, I 
I, I really don't know if he, he knew about it. Um, I know that uh, I know that surely individuals told him. Yeah. As far as as far as his knowledge about what was occurring, I'll tell you what. Uh, I say this: if I sat in a communistic meeting and I didn't know it, I, I would be ashamed of myself. Right. I'll be like, what? The? Yeah. <laughs> you know, because that's what that's what they're about. They want to destroy it. I read an article a while back, years ago, that that was how the unions got started as well, is that they needed to find angry people in right. order to get it going. And at that time, the whole civil rights, so-called civil rights movement was happening, and the blacks were angry. And so they went to the angry black people and told them, you need protection, you need a union. And the blacks fell for it, and as a result, the unions came about. Well, um, I, I, don't, I didn't know about the black connection with unions, but unions have been around a long time, and they were, that's right, they were socialistic organizations right. in which they were trying to make the, the workers, the proletariat, angry at the bourgeois, the, the business owners. So this is interesting that there are a lot of preachers in the Methodist church particularly, Methodists and Presbyterians who actually got into uh, unions and working for unions, and soon enough they were marching with the socialists in the 1920s and 30s and 40s against America. That's exactly what happened, and then and the unions were part of it. I um, was driving in this morning to work, and I was thinking, it's really amazing to see what's happening in the earth today because everything that they are fighting for, it's not real. It's an illusion. It's made up. For example, they in the black family, they fought to get the black man out, and they lied and said that the black woman can raise the children. That's, look at the right. mess that's happening with that. They have lied to the blacks and the whites by telling the blacks that the whites are their enemies, and that's not true. They are now saying that men are women and women are men. That's not true. They are saying it, it's like everything that's they want to take out the police department telling that telling the people that things would be better. That's not true. It's like it's a whole lie. It's all made up. And there's a war on the earth under made up lies. It's not even real. And the people can't see that it's not real. Well, just as you point out frequently, Satan's the father of all lies. Yeah. And the liar from the beginning. And that's what's happening. It's, it's a satanic movement, really. All of this is this communistic movement is an anti-God movement. That's what this is. And consequently, anything that is a vestige of, of a Christian society, such as the nuclear family, as Black Lives Matter calls it, they're going to attack it because uh, the, the family is is actually uh, the, build, the the basic building block of a of a peaceable Christian society where children learn to be from their, from their fathers and mothers in the home where they learn to be Christian people. But it's it really is an anti-Christian movement all the way around. And I, it, it, if people don't see that at this point, I don't think that there's much hope for them. I was counseled with a, a, a 20-year-old male yesterday, and I think he was black. He may have been white. He was in another state, so I couldn't see him. And he was telling me that all his life, they had his parents had put him on medication, the schools were saying that his energy was ADHD and he was seeing all these different therapies and nothing was really helping him. He, he got worse because they put him on medication and everything. And one day he heard my video that said that, or watched one of my videos that said that you need to forgive and return to God, right? And he went and forgave his parents for allowing all those things to happen to him. And right away his life changed. He started to overcome all that stuff. And so he just finally told the parents and the therapy, goodbye, I don't need you. I found someone to help me. And the help was that he returned to God and he started to see things clearer. Now he has a job. His life is working. And I don't hear preachers telling people you need to return to God so that he can guide you instead of Satan. That is an excellent point. Jesse Lee, you know what? <clears throat> I pointed out to people, for example, you don't ever hear any of the apostles in the New Testament or New Testament writers talking about these issues that we're talking about today as far as, uh, as, far as uh, getting away from the discrimination in society and the supposed injustices and talking about social justice. You do hear Paul writing to slaves and telling the slaves, he says, if you're a slave, don't worry about it. Instead, use your slavery and use it for Christ. Yes. Now, that's not to say that Christianity 
would not get rid of slavery because we know that the principles of Christianity permeating a society finally rids slavery. But that is, that is a secondary, that's a byproduct of Christianity. Paul even tells Onesimus to go back to Philemon, who is a slave owner. Onesimus was the slave. He said, you go back to him when he found him in Rome. And so slavery is a part of the New Testament. This is a good point, too. I mean, how is it that, you know, this tearing down the statues, would we tear down the statues can of Philemon? You, can you hold that for me? Are yeah, you able to stay a little bit longer? Yeah, oh, sure. That'd be great. Okay, let me take a quick break. I want to ask you about the statues and things, all right? Bill Lockwood is here. I am telling you, anyone understand what's going on, Bill does. Bill, tell the folks how to get your books and your radio show, amazing radio show on the weekends, and and now you are podcasting your shows. How can people get your information? Yeah, thank you, Jesse. It's American Liberty with Bill Lockwood.com. That's the website, American Liberty with Bill Lockwood.com. And, and we also have, we're all on YouTube now. Um, and thank you, some of your technicians behind the scenes who helped me get that started yes. uh, on YouTube. And um, James Hake actually was the one. And so he's and another he, smart white man. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? And he is much smarter than I am. So he, me, yeah, really, than I am too. And uh, so anyway, he kind of kicked me off with that. So it's a YouTube station, and it's um, American Liberty with Bill Lockwood is on YouTube. And then, of course, uh, the radio show is out of Wichita Falls, and now we're in uh, Lubbock, San Angelo, and Abilene also. Uh, that will be on Saturdays at 11 a.m. That's the radio broadcast. And then Sundays at 5 o'clock uh, p.m. on the radio broadcast as well. So that's, that's how you get to those materials. I also have a... Uh, a short podcast on Bible things. It's called the writing for the Bible brand, writing right. for the Bible brand. And I do a little short piece about, uh, you know, just some of these issues and how the Bible touches them and what the Bible says about different things. So nice. Oh, you have, you have someone to help you now with all that. <laughs> yes, sir. I do. You know what? At mostly uh, volunteer people, but right, yeah. that's right. I do have people helping me with that. Oh, right? good, man. Good. I wanted to ask you about, and then I want to squeeze in at least a couple calls for you. I wanted to ask you about the monuments. I'm looking at these people, Black Lives Matter and Antifa and others destroying the statues and monuments and things like that. And it reminded me of the Taliban. It reminded me of um, the... Uh, Muslim people, you know, whenever they conquer a Christian nation, the first thing they do is destroy the history of that nation. And that is happening in America. Am I seeing that wrong? No, I think you're exactly right. That's exactly what Islam does. They come into a place, for example, in the Holy Land, the Bible lands, it's very, very sad. But places that they have conquered and taken, they have destroyed uh, many of the the monuments from ancient Rome and other places because of pagan and so forth. We, we recognize that ancient Rome was pagan, but it's, it's a sad, sad thing that we want to destroy the culture so much so that we, that we're just, we're cutting, we're cutting off the umbilical cord to the past in every way whatsoever. And they're destroying everything like that. And that's what they're doing. In Islamic c countries, same thing the Nazis did uh, in, after the Weimar Republic, they came in and they, they took away, they, they changed the flags, they changed the monuments, they changed the colors, they changed everything about it. They didn't want any, any connection with the past at all. And that's what we've been teaching in our colleges, that America is a racist country, whether you're talking about the American Indian question or slavery or whatever it may be, or the women, women's rights, they're gonna say America, it was an, an ugly country, we want no connection with it. So everything in the past is going to have to be gold. That's exactly what they're doing with it. I remember uh, over near Iraq, there was a Christian country, uh, something over there, it was predominantly old Christian. And right. when they, when they, the uh, Muslim conquered that area, and they destroyed everything, all the way, uh, the old books, the maps, the everything about Christianity in that in that city or in town, wherever it was. And it's weird. What is the reason of wiping out history, these folks wiping out history? Well, the reason the, the Muslims do it is because they believe that, that unless you bow to Allah, then you are a pagan and that has to be erased. That, that it's, a, it's a scorched earth policy with Islam. 
scorched earth. So they will, they, they, everything is destroyed. They, they remake society after the will of Muhammad. And that's how they want to do in America. So but, what they want to make America Black Lives Matter or something? No, but this is interesting. The, the mosques and, the, and the, the clerics, the Muslims, are 100% with Black Lives Matter. 100%. Oh. Because they see it is a destruction of American culture, which is what they're all after, the destruction of American culture. No matter, no matter the sins of America, Western culture has been a leader for Christianity and advancement in the world worldwide, yeah. hands down. Yeah. But it doesn't matter. They want to destroy it all. So no matter what the sins have been and how we've corrected those problems as we've gone along, and even our founders set in place to correct those problems and set them in a better course, it doesn't matter. They want to destroy everything connected with the founding fathers. So the founding fathers are going to have to go as well. Abraham Lincoln is going to have to go. Yeah. Thomas Jefferson, is our, and you're already seeing that. What's wrong with the whites that they let all these weird people into their country and not just America, but other parts of the world. And then they just sit back and let the people destroy their country. You know, I, in my view, Jesse, liberalism, which is really based upon frequently anti-God concepts, if not all the time, it has a weakening, an anemic effect upon people. It just, it just zaps everything that you have. Every principle that you have is overturned and and pretty soon you, you can't stand for anything. People who can't stand for something, they stand for nothing. Yeah. And that's what, and that's what's happening. The only, there's only one truth that, that they want to have. And that is you have to, uh, you have to confess you're a racist if you're white. So, uh, that's the only truth that's going to stand out in their minds. So can you imagine what does it feel like for a white man to have to bow down, lick boots, uh, clean feet, wash feet, all in the name of Jesus. What does that feel like going down on your knees? Well, not that you were ever doing a Noah, but right. can you imagine being a man and somebody can make you do that? I have thought about that very question. I've pondered that a whole lot, Jesse. I don't know. That must, I don't know what's happening to the, the mind and, and the backbone of individuals. Especially in men. Right, men. I have no idea. I, that's right. I mean, well, we have we have allowed the young people to run the country. You know, I mean, it's been that way on television and entertainment for a long time. The kids know best, and uh, we've allowed the children to run the family. And uh, fathers have not been fathers in the home, even where there is a father, a, a biological father in the home. They they very infrequently stand up and say no on something. Yeah, I know. They don't do that. So, you know, <laughs> I mean, we just. So whatever the kid wants, that's what we do. And that's kind of how it's, it's a, I don't know, it's a very sad thing to see. To me, it's just a, a pitiful thing to see. It sure is. It made me want to go home and smoke a <laughs> pot. <laughs> <laughs> I do not know, but I'm just like, oh, I, I can't imagine. <laughs> <laughs> so I got to ask this, then I got to uh, get you some calls. Um, and, and, and I have noticed something, maybe I'm wrong. I doubt it, but maybe I'm wrong. In the black community, they took out the man. The man left at home, whatever happened. And the woman right. took over. All hell broke loose in black families. Right. In the uh, white community, they're starting to take out the white man. Now you have these white kids out protesting and burning and destroying because their fathers are not around anymore. And I noticed that in government both federal and local government, the women are taking over mayors and police chiefs and city councils and congresswomen and all that. And when the women take over, it looks like it's so easy for hell to come in and destroy. Am I seeing that wrong? No, I think you're right about that. And, and that is that um, that's a part of it, too. I mentioned even the women's rights movement uh, earlier, you know, no, no one wants to hold women back from advancing as far as they want to go, but let's not have the same idea that we've been sexist in our thinking, and therefore we have to, as a token, to hire women, because that that is, once again, that would be white male paternalism. That would be saying, you can't make it on your own, you can't do it by yourself, we're going to have to hire some women to show that I'm not sexist. Same thing regarding the blacks, and that's that's the point Shelby Steele makes. Uh, regarding the blacks in his book, White Guilt. 
But when the women take over, I don't see where there is advancement. I only see destruction. It's like this this woman in uh, uh, St. Louis, this black woman, she's a, I, I don't, what is she? Circuit attorney, a black woman. Oh. And, and instead of going after the villains who broke into the private property, Kim Gardner, okay. instead of uh, instead of talking about punishing the criminals for, for breaking into a private property, uh, she's talking about going after the private property owners for protecting themselves. And in St. Louis, I mean, not St. Louis, but Minneapolis, where all that mess happened, uh, the the mayor of the city. And the city councils are going after the police rather than going after the rioters and the looters. And it's just happening all around the country, Atlanta, Georgia, all over. It's like the women are standing up for the enemies rather than the good citizens. And it reminds me of when uh, I was a kid and my father or grandfather wanted me to do something. It looked like it was painful for me. I didn't want to do it. Mm -hmm. uh, they're like, no, you got to stay and do it. You got to fish that. You got to clean that area. Yeah. And and the mama would say, oh, leave him alone. Leave that boy alone. He don't need to do it. It's like daddy made you do it, but mama won't let you do it. And it end up destroying you. You know what? You, you make a good point. Uh, matter of fact, people need to hear that all around the country. And that is we have enough trouble with the men standing up to be men and because if you do you're going you're going to have to go you're going to go upstream you're going to have to stand like you're going to, have to stand like a rock while the, the whole world rushes around you and presses you to go downstream in a different direction yeah and and that's we're getting into a situation where it's almost like a war and yeah you, know, you need men to be men and that is that's a very frightful thing but instead they've turned it over to a lot a lot of the women they're just kind of going the other direction themselves i mean it it is a i think that's exactly right what's happening and we have we've become so weak weak as water in all the areas and then we're turning it over to other people qualified or not qualified just because we want to meet these quotas it reminds me of the order of God, of God in Christ, Christ in man, man over woman, woman over children. That's a perfect order. And whenever that order is changed in any way, it doesn't work. And um, in, the, in the Bible, it says that whenever the man listens to the woman, he will suffer. And so we have listened to the woman in the homes. Well, I haven't. And they'll listen to the women now in the public square, and the men are suffering for it. You know, the truth is, Jesse, that we've done the same thing regarding the women as we have the blacks. Yeah. Uh, that Robert Bork mentions this in his book called Slouching Towards Gomorrah. He tells us very plainly, says, for example, a woman who wants to be a pilot in the Air Force this or in the Navy. And this is, he wrote this book about 20 years ago. He says the, the pressure was so incredible upon the instructor pilots that they that they not red flag a woman at all because you had to go to the base commander to answer why did you red flag a woman pilot if it had been you or it had been me well we would that would not have been the case right. red flag you say you're a, you're a student pilot and you did you you failed that flight but if you did that to a woman you're going to have to go to the base commander and answer because the political pressure was absolutely so great upon the base, the base commander, to get women into those positions of pilots so that we can say we are not a racist or a sexist society. The same thing happened with Bill Clinton. He, he strong-armed the banks. He put pressure on the banks in order that they would loan money to people who could not pay it yeah. so that he could stand up and say, we've put so many blacks in homes. Well, what happened? Well, they defaulted <laughs> on the loans because they couldn't make it. They were, they were bad risks, and the banks would not have they would not have given them the money except the government was smooshing on them with their arm yeah. saying, you're going to give that money to the black family or to the women, even if they don't qualify. You're going to give that money because you're, you're, you're doing it because you're racist. And so that's kind of the assumption that white, it, this, this white, it goes back to the white guilt. Whites are racist. Whites are guilty. And therefore, we have to do something like that. And so it's, it's turned our society upside down. But that's the, that's the assumption they're moving on. I tried to warn Bill Clinton, don't do that. Don't be giving these black folk that money. They ain't going to pay it back. I, yeah. I may not know my flower, but I know black people. <laughs> and they ain't going to pay you the money back. And they'll get mad if you ask for it. <laughs> 
Well, that's the, but that's what happened, and, and they're still going on. You know, there's just the pressure so tremendous on on the businesses and organizations in the military push the people on in these positions. Yeah, I notice when I get on an airplane now, and they have I look in the in the in the cabin where the pilots are, and if I see two women in there, I have to go in prayer. <laughs> 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 I'm, like, I'm like, Lord, I hope they don't get mad before I get to my destination. <laughs> well, the sad thing is that it really it really destroys able to viewing people for who they are, yeah. for the merit that they actually do possess, because we're giving them things that they don't earn. Yeah. And therefore, you don't. So you're, we're in a society where we can't even and we can't even t hardly talk like this openly. You and I are. But. You know, they, they don't want to, this is something you don't even talk about. Amazing. I, one last thing I noticed is that men today, millennial men and, mm -hmm. and uh, Z men, they don't look like men. They look pretty. Oh. You know, you know when, when I was growing up, men looked rough. You know, uh. young boys and teenagers, we all, we kind of played rough. We played hard football, I mean basketball when I ran track. We would run track hard, you know what I mean? And right. and rode horses and you just yeah. boys were boys and you knew it. And now millennials and Z men, they look prettier than the women. The women yeah. look rough. And the, <laughs> <laughs> the Metro man, yeah. Yeah, it's crazy to see that. It's like what happened to society where the yeah. men they look like all look like gym boys, you know, like they just go to the gym and sit in the sauna and 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 walk around the gym with their backpacks on, and, and <laughs> yeah, that's right. It, it, it's no manliness in them. They don't stand for anything. They don't stand up. They're afraid. Yeah, you know what? We've we've gotten rid of John Wayne, and they want to get rid of his name also. At the yeah. Or they say we can get rid of his name off that airport. I, I mean, the, the John Wayne's. That's right. They want they want to get rid of that. I heard that they wanted to get rid of John Wayne Airport and, and rename it Obama. I don't know how true that is. If they rename that airport Obama, I'm never flying out of there again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, once again, same sad story. Tell the folks how to get you. Then I want you to at least talk to one of these callers here. Okay. Uh, it's American Liberty with Bill Lockwood.com. That's the website. And uh, the podcast, or rather the, um, the video cast is on YouTube, American Liberty with Bill Lockwood. And the radio shows out of Wichita Falls and uh, Lubbock, Abilene, and San Angelo as well. Let's go to Philip out of, uh, it doesn't say where he's from, but he is in the United States somewhere. Philip, welcome to the show. You're on the air with Bill Lockwood. What's up, Jesse? Remember me? N never ask a black man if he remembers. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> so, um, Did you have a question oh, for Bill, Philip, or me? All right. Oh, let's go to Bill. So, um... Bill, you've been saying um, that Christianity is going to go into the underground, and I can definitely see that. And um, like all these people coming out and saying, oh, we don't need this stuff. This is old stuff. It's going to keep us down. We need the new American society that will be focused on equal opportunity. And that's exactly what the Soviets did. And it reminds me of a Bible verse. A uh, friend actually reminded me of this one. It's Romans one twenty two. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. It's true. That's right. Yeah, Phil, and actually, got, right. I didn't oh, tell Jesse right. this before, uh, but my parents are actually immigrants from the Soviet Union, so they've experienced the hell this is going to happen. Um, and it wasn't as bad for them as my grandparents but my parents had it pretty rough, too. Like, uh, you're not allowed to go to church. Churches are banned. Uh, we, my parents, gathered in people's houses, and if the police caught you, they'd, you know, you'd be lucky to get away. And kids in school would make fun of you if you were a Christian. And um, I just want to ask, um, how bad do you think it's going to get? Well, uh, you know what, that, that is the question of the hour. I'm not sure, Philip, how bad it will get. I, I, I suppose a lot of it depends upon whether or not Christian people are able to stand for principles and, uh, and stand strong and how many there are. 
Um, I'd like to think they're more than than the appearances make it look like. But you know what? I have a um, a cousin who married a girl from Hungary, and she tells exactly the same story that your parents do, and that is we are tracking along exactly the same way that was done in the communist countries when communists took over countries such as Hungary and how they had to escape. And I think it's getting to the point, Philip, where they're going to, it's already happening in some places where the government has stepped into churches, whether it be local governments or city governments or state governments, and asking them, uh, they want the membership list in some places, I've forgotten where this was, I read this the other day, where they wanted a membership list of the people in the churches. And the, the point's coming where they're going to say, well, we're going to give you a certificate of allowance to meet or not meet. And that depends upon what kind of that what kind of doctrine you're going to teach and what kind of material you're going to distribute. That's amazing. We are, uh, we're about to end this hour. I kept you the whole hour, man. Thank you, oh. Philip, for your call, by the way. Yeah, I enjoyed it. Yeah, thank you, Philip. Uh, tell the folks once again, you get your show, read your articles, your podcast and all that. Well, it's American Liberty with Bill Lockwood dot com. That's the uh, that's the uh, website. Uh, the, the radio show is uh, American Liberty dot com. It's on YouTube also. So uh, one doesn't have to go to the the website of uh, my, my website to see it, but you can see it on YouTube. So American Liberty with Bill Lockwood dot com or American Liberty with Bill Lockwood. That's the that's the uh, radio show on YouTube. And then I have writing for the Bible brand on YouTube as well. Do you see uh, South Africa being created in America now where yes, white Absolutely. people land being taken away? I even heard black life members say that they're going to take the white man land in this yes, country. They, they, they say the blacks when they, okay, but there's another built, whole issue, but we sided with the blacks because the apartheid, that was, that was the worst crime that could ever happen. That is why it's in control of the blacks, South Africa. So our government, with Clinton and everybody, they wanted to get down there and kick the whites out. And the promise was, okay, you keep your lands, you keep your properties. But now they've, they've confiscated properties. And as I mentioned earlier, they're now destroying the people. They're actually attacking and murdering the farmers yes. and the people the whites that are there. It doesn't stop with property destruction. That's going to happen here and somewhat yes, already happening. Right. That's exactly right. You can see that on YouTube. You can see people, uh, they're, because they're white, they're just being beaten up and killed. Well, I'm, on well I'm glad I'm black. <laughs> <laughs> it's time for people to stand up. They'll it's your area, Bill. Have fun down there and thank you so much. I Truly enjoyed talking to you this morning. Well, it's my, my privilege always, Jesse. And I hope the Lord blesses your program and all your work. Thank you, Bill. You too. Thank you. Say hi okay. to the family for me, all right? I surely will. All I right. I surely will do that. All right. Okay, folks, I got to take a break. We have two more hours to go. When I come back, I'll get to all of your calls, all right? Amazing. And don't forget to like, follow, tweet, subscribe, and share the Jesse Lee Peterson Radio Show, folks. We really appreciate it. We are at war. It is a spiritual battle for the soul of America. And it's going to take all of us to do it. <laughs>